What's going on everybody? Triple Crown 24 back today with a, another card show recap. You guys have really been enjoying them. I've gotten a lot of great feedback on it, so I'm going to keep doing them um, as long as I have enough stuff to show off. Obviously when I sell a lot, I can't really show that because, well, the cards are gone. They're no longer in my possession. So I did two different card shows this weekend. I did the back half of the Columbus show on Sunday, and I did uh, the the one-day show in Fort Wayne on Saturday. I hung out with Sean Stealing Second. If you're not familiar with his channel, uh, I, I didn't give him enough credit in my last video uh, when I did the Indianapolis card show recap. Um, but definitely go check out his channel. It's He's got great footage of the shows when he goes to them as well. Uh, so you guys who have asked for card show footage, definitely go check him out because he does a really thorough job of kind of going through it and showing you his pickups. And then he's got a really solid collection, too. He's got a wide variety of cards, so I think you guys will really enjoy his channel. Um, with that being said, he was very hospitable the entire time. He took me over to his local card shop where I made a big purchase. You can see what that was in my last video. And uh, he bought me lunch as well, and I was really uh, starving <laughs> about halfway through the show. So that was much appreciated. Really solid dude. Fun to hang out and talk with him. Uh, so wanted to show you guys some of the stuff I got. So the Fort Wayne show, fantastic. The Columbus show, I made some mistakes. Um, so we'll we'll get into it. It's kind of like the good, the bad, and the ugly here. So we'll start with, uh, we'll do the Fort Wayne show first. So I made some pretty solid pickups at that show. Um, in terms of trades, now I did get some Cabreras, but I will show those to you guys uh, in my next video when I just do the Cabrera recap um, with all the stuff I've been getting lately. But here were some trades, so shout out to all the Philly boys out there. Uh, you'll probably enjoy these next two cards, but this was the first part of it. And with trades, it usually just depends on what I have into it and what my sticker price is. So. Whenever I make a trade, the goal is always to basically increase my t the value of my total assets. Um, so that's what I did with both these trades here. This is a Mike Schmidt, really awesome SP Legendary Cuts Auto, number 25 of 25. Little piece of memorabilia to go along with it. Sorry, the glare is terrible on that. There we go. Um, and then I also, in the same deal, it was able to strike up this bad boy check out these patches a little shout out to hoff collector because i know he has quite a few of these not these guys because they are not in the hall of fame but we got francisco lariano and cole hamels number to five a dual patch auto really sweet card uh it's uh, something that grabs people's attention i had a few people comment on it when i set it out on sunday for sale for the first time and it's, it's one of those attention grabbers. So sometimes those are good to just have in the showcase because it gets people to stop and take a look at what else you have because there's a lot of tables there. So those were really cool. And then I actually won a second Mike Trout finest rookie in a Raz, believe it or not. And I made a trade. So uh, I sold the one that I had Raz, and I got to keep the one I got from Brian, which was awesome because now I was able to basically profit off of the one I won in the Raz. But... Uh, the guy, I feel like he really uh, gave me a lot more than he got with the Trout because he was telling me that he thought it was going to do pretty well. He, he liked the condition on it and everything. And I'm like, okay, well. So he got me this Jim Palmer uh, red ink from last year's Heritage, number to 69. The red inks are very tough. This Francisco Lindor autograph, which because I set up in shows where Cleveland teams are popular, that is always welcome. And then just as a little toss in this Vern fuller autograph so he had a stack of stuff he asked do you do trades at all i said yes i pulled these out and i was expecting him to maybe offer just the palmer and i was hoping i could talk him into giving me the lindor but he immediately said well how about all three of these plus there was cash involved with it as well um, which made it well worth it for me and uh it was a no doubter no brainer for me to, to make that deal so i feel like it worked out well for both sides he got the rookie that he was really after um so that's kind of it for uh, the stuff that I traded for in terms of inventory. But Sean has a much more detailed recap of what the show looked like and everything on his channel. So I would recommend that if you want to see more footage of the show that you defer to him after this video. Okay, um, this also came in while I was gone. 
I put this out for sale for the first time on Sunday at the Columbus show. This is a Puig refractor. It came in as part of the lot that I bought, so at 15. I'll probably do 10 on this when it eventually goes. Um, he's still pretty popular with Reds fans from what I understand just because uh, he was kind of a, a little legend uh, when he was with Cincinnati. It was only for a few months, but he is uh, still seemingly beloved by the Reds fans out there. Now a free agent, so we'll see where he goes. Um, but I, I didn't do very well at the Columbus show, and it's not it's nobody's fault but my own on this one because I made a lot of mistakes. So the, the big mistake I made was that I ripped a lot of wax for myself and I've been in a bad habit of ripping wax lately just because I've been using it as a means to get inventory for my value boxes and uh, it's just not a good idea to do it that way at least on my budget. So I did get this Tatis refractor out of my box of finest which was really cool. I got some autographs as well but it's nothing really to write home about. I just wanted to have some fun. I did a Series 2 Jumbo. This The Series 2 Jumbo was at a fantastic price, so I, I had to jump on that. Uh, I got a Bueller Gold. Just pulled out some of the bigger stuff here. Eloy, Tatis, and Alonzo for the, the big four, as well as the Vlad Jr. short print. So this one I'm going to stash away with the one I picked up a few weekends ago in Newport. And then some dollar box stuff that I just thought was way too cheap to be in there for a dollar. A Vado Rookie and a Senzel. First Bowman Holiday. Uh, those are cards that will do well in the area that I'm at. This guy is a beast for the Twins. I was actually asking Dustin and Blake about him. Uh, I had one of his autographs. I pulled his first Bowman out of Bowman Draft last year, and I sold it at a PSA 10 for like 100 bucks. And this is a Bowman's Best Auto, which is kind of streaky, which his are notorious for. But Trevor Larnack, definitely worth more than a dollar, so that was a no-doubter. This one is also in the dollar box. I figured that he's, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to hold on to this card for too long. My Strasburg stuff that I had out earlier got cleaned up very quickly after the World Series. We'll see if that's still the case now that he's a free agent and it's the off season. But this is a refractor from last year's Heritage. And it's just a beautiful card. Um, might take a look at it for possible grading down the road, but we'll see. Wander Franco for a buck. You just can't go wrong with Wander Franco. Uh, this is the 30th Bowman anniversary. Shout out to Mike O. Put together that set. And then Matt Stafford, finest rookie. I know that uh, when I go to Kalamazoo pretty soon, that will be a card that is pretty popular. Um, and then I also got a slow random here, Eloy rookie from Topps Chrome. I am like an Eloy magnet. So I got a few Cabreras. Like I said, that will be in my next video when I show off the Cabreras. But I, oh, I forgot to show this off. This was also at the uh, Fort Wayne show. It's a Nick Senzel rookie. This was the first card I purchased. It's from Topps directly. His autographs were Redemptions and Topps Chrome. It's the purple. I love the color parallels this year. Number to 250. The guy didn't have anything on his table that was slabbed. So a little uh, insight there for anyone who's going to shows. I'm sure most people know this already, but... Generally speaking, if someone doesn't have any slabbed cards on their table, then chances are they haven't really looked at conditions. So if you're someone who's looking to grab stuff to grade, that's something to keep in mind. If you do see that, that was what I kept in mind when I saw this. And looking at it a little bit closer, obviously I'm not going to take it out of the sticker yet, but it looks really solid. So the next time I do a submission to PSA, I actually just sent in cards uh, for a submission. But the next submission I send out, this bad boy is going to be included into it. So kind of stashing that away. Hope to get it back in time for spring training. Um, and then so I had to make up for my losses kind of at the Columbus show. I had $107 in sales, which it was a Sunday. Not too bad. Um, for a last minute thing that I did on a whim, I confirmed the table late Saturday night and kind of turned around to get everything ready to go. And I wasn't very prepared. So all things considered, it was okay. Um, but the wax is what really killed me, and I, I need to abstain from wax. There's nothing wrong with whipping, ripping wax, but you got to know your limits, and I went above and beyond my limits. So that's just a lesson for everyone out there. Luckily, I didn't get too deep into it. Um, but I, I made some purchases to fill up my dollar boxes. I decided to cut down my value boxes into dollar boxes, so now there's some pretty good deals in there. But I was able to buy out two different uh, 
four row monster boxes full of dollar and 25 cent cards. I have bought a lot of relics too that I'll use for an idea that I'll talk to you guys more about in a future video, but it has a lot of tops update rookies in them. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll take about half of these and put them in the dollar box and stash them. Uh, a lot of optic rookies as well. You can see it's some of the big names here. Um, kind of thumb through these. So I'll put some of them in the dollar box and then I'll keep some just stashed away just in case any of these guys hit it big. I have enough bulk on these now and, and not that much into the lot where I can afford to sit on some of this stuff for a while. Uh, obviously some of these guys have already kind of made it big like Tatis there. And then I, I was really stoked uh, just with the, the quality of the lot. I got a lot of stuff that I think will do very well in a dollar box. Also got a, a ton of Nick Senzel rookies. That's the, the big rookie who I've been chasing from this past year's class besides Eloy Jimenez, just based on geography and how I think that they're valued right now. So some other cards I picked up, uh, like this Eloy Optic, this Tatis rookie here, and then Josh Van Meter as well. Included in that was uh, the 150-year stamp. He's kind of a hot rookie for the Reds, so that kind of stuff is what I look for. It'll be perfect for the big show I have at the end of the month. Um, so the dollar boxes, I won't show you. They're they're filling up now. I have, you probably will see it if you check out Sean's video. I have two like baseball boxes that were value boxes and those will now be dollar boxes, everything in it. And now I have one of those four row boxes filled about 75% of the way. So that will make it, uh, basically a lot more available there and hopefully uh, increase the number of sales I get with that because it hasn't been too popular yet but when I started doing I did a little test run this weekend with like dollar stuff to see if it would go a little bit better and, and it did so um, happy about that for sure I think that that will be a, a big hit of the next one so you guys will see uh, I'm going to be idle this weekend in terms of setting up at shows. At least that's the plan right now. There's a big card show about 45 minutes to an hour from me. Uh, big in terms of like the size of it. It doesn't. It only goes on one day, but it's held monthly. So I'm going to probably go there and just look to make some deals to get some inventory. Not going to really try to sell anything uh, just because selling to dealers is not how I'm going to make my money uh, most of the time. So I am... Looking forward to that kind of regrouping, learning from my mistakes from this past weekend uh, at the Columbus show and kind of a resetting before I have these two big shows here at the end of the month. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Really appreciate all your support. Be back with some Miggy pickups a little bit later in the week, and I'll see you then. Have a good one.